PhD as an electronic manufacturer. I would like to answer the question and um, share the challenges and our R&D approach in this presentation. So before I get into the topic, I would like to briefly introduce who we are. So our mother company, Viet, was founded in 1945 with small screws, bolts, and nuts business. But then, since it has rapidly grown and expanded its um, business unit, now more than 400 companies and 77 employees belong to the company. And Viet Electronic is one of biggest, uh, one of successful subsidiary among 400 of them. Um, we manufacture a wide range of electronic components, sell them, provide service worldwide. Um, so, Viet Electronic um, has continued to prosper since its foundation um, 35 years ago. It began only with a few workers and selling several electronic um, magnetic parts. But it has openly adopted innovative technology. Now we became one of um, electronic market player, and we are still growing fast. So if you open up one of your home appliances, such as toaster, vacuum cleaner, oven, etc., the chances are you find this tiny component with our logo on it. Personally, I haven't tried yet, but. Anyways, and we aim to adapt 3D printing technology um, to our production in um, several years and make the next innovation. Um, then why we aim this? There must be something good about 3D printing, and probably you have heard of it, but let me briefly just repeat it quickly. So there are three major steps to go through to bring a new component to the market. First of all, the idea and um, design is conceptualized and um, developed in a lab. All the details, parameters, and requirements are sent to manufacturing line for facility setup. Components are made through um, assembly, um, injection molding, um, and many other processes. Once the parts are ready, these components must go through the strict and tricky um, safety and um, performance test. It takes minimum 2.5 months to over years, and minimum it costs few ten thousand to few hundred thousand euro. Not all components pass the test. Then this expensive and time-consuming process has to be repeated over again. On the other hand, thanks to the single and simple process of um, 3D printing, the fabrication time can be much reduced as few hours to few weeks. So even though the components fail the test, the revision, the burden of design revision and uh, fabrication isn't that significant so that we can quickly go through the whole process over again. Um, also, um, the fast prototyping isn't the only benefits that 3D printing brings, but also it's suitable for customized products and small batch production as well. It sounds really promising. Then how widely and um, deeply 3D printing involves to our production nowadays? The answer is not that much yet. We still have lots of challenges to overcome, and uh, we are still developing the technology and looking for the solutions. So I would like to explain what challenges we have in several steps in next slides. So the step first, we need ingredients. And these materials um, are uh, materials that are used for electronics and available for 3D printing. Lots of materials, and also we can see the overlapped material in the middle, but also can find quite a huge gap, um, the discrepancy between two material groups. Why? 
because 3D printing has been early adopted by aerospace, um, automotive, engineering, and such, these industries are still widely used um, in these industries. And they mainly focus on thermal and mechanical properties rather than electrical properties, which we must take account. So the material available um, these days are um, developed in the consideration, the reflection of their requirements. And here we have the first challenge. We have limited printable material that are designed suitable and engineered for electronics. But we are quite optimistic about this issue. Um, we work closely with universities and material developers and see how fast they make improvements day by day. So um, there will be more material available, which is suitable for um, electronics as the attention and interest grow fast. And we work hard on it. So once all the material become printable, finally we'll be able to print out some parts. And this picture is one of our products, which is as tiny as no more than two centimeter dimension. Then what is it made of? Probably it's made of some plastics and metals together. But surprisingly, these tiny components are made of total 13 different material. And this isn't the only exceptional case. Most of um, electronic components consist of few to few tens of material. Therefore, we focus on simultaneous multi-material printing. But then, um, different material have different properties and behave differently when printed. And how to print metal and plastic together? Some uh, material requires specific post-process, it sounds really hectic. Um, so in order to tackle this issue, we, um, develop our, we are developing our own printer, which is complex combination of um, different technologies. There are already great advanced innovative technology available. So what we have to do is to be a little bit more creative and come up with the best solution, best combination. So we look into the brilliant hybrid um, printer, which can precisely um, deposit, um, extrude, or deposit, or um, print different material. Um, yeah. And that's our best interest. So once all the components are ready, we need to assemble them together to achieve the desired electrical um, functionality. And we print circuits. So in 3D printing, um, mostly the ink printing or inkjetting or dispensing are used. So this conductive ink is dispensed over various types of substrates, such as polymer, film, flexible, stretchable substrates. And this printed circuit is selectively sintered um, so that the um, particles can be fused together in molecular level and have conductivity. And here we see the conductivity comparison between bulk material and um, available nanoparticle inks in the market. Um, the most used material for circuit boards nowadays is copper because of price, um, price con competitiveness and good conductivity. Bulk silver, which has highest conductivity among all metals has slightly higher conductivity than copper, but this noble material is expensive, which is not desired for mass production. Once these high conductive metals are produced into um, nanoparticle inks, it's difficult to achieve more than a third of conductivity that bulk material have. Um, what does it mean by low conductivity? It means energy loss and more, um, more material consumption to transmit the same current. Also, since it involves the, um, the sintering pro 
process involves the high energy source, it increases the risk of damage on substrates, so it has to be better. So we are researching on highly conductive printable material with optimized sintering or post-heat process. Also, these material must guarantee the reliability after printing and shall last long enough without oxidation or deterioration afterwards. <clears throat> Next step would be to combine the um, components and circuit together and in mass production, mainly soldering process, reflow soldering and um, wave soldering are used. So this process starts from the room temperature, gradually preheated up to 260 de degrees Celsius, um, stays there for a few seconds to uh, maximum 30 seconds and cools down again. Because of this harsh thermal condition that mm, all the components must go through, we use um, high performance engineering polymers um, which have melting point ranging from 280 to 300 or um, over. Um, on the other hand, the most of polymers that are um, printable have low uh, melting points than this condition, um, which means it cannot withstand our thermal requirements. Um, and all, there are many approaches to tackle this issue. First, we can develop more um, materials which can have, uh, which have higher, higher um, um, melting point um, than the condition. Also, nowadays, many of printers already offer the extrusion or printer printing temperature of 400, and some heat-resistant materials are already available in the market, and the range will be extended. So it wouldn't be a problem, but the smarter way to approach to this problem would be to take the advantage of 3D printing. So we don't need to let all the components to go through this harsh thermal condition. Instead, we can selectively print solder or conductive paste <coughs> or any conductive material with low melting point. Or even all these additional process can be simply ruled out by printing the circuit and assembling the components together using adhesive conductive um, inks or any kind of smarter way. So we had an overview of what challenges we have. So first, we need to overcome the limited material that are uh, suitable for uh, electronics and also need to develop the um, 3D printing technologies with post-processing techniques and assembly technology as well. Once we um, able to find all the, all the solutions, we'll be able to print out something like this, which is no different than the product we produce nowadays because we had the conventional approach to the manufacturing process. Also, the mentioned technologies are partially available already. Some functioning components have been printed by universities and institutes, and the circuit printing is well adapted to flexible and um, um, stretchable application. Um, the circuit printing um, is used for rapid prototyping. Um, it can print the electric and um, conductor together. But these still have limited functionality. So what we aim to produce is truly 3D printed electronics uh, with much simplified process and um, with revolutionary 3D dimensional design. The functionality will be better, and it will not have the flat and rigid feature anymore. How to? achieve this? How can we make it happen? We cooperate closely with hardware manufacturer, universities, startups, research institute, and material developers, and we share the requirements, requirements from electronic markets and provide applications for their um, technology. 
And we are still looking for more cooperations with those who are totally ambitious and have creative and breakthrough ideas. And also you can be our partner. So if you're interested in our technology,